Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how to make an adjustable countdown timer based on Arduino. I have used here Arduino Mega 2560, but of course you can use whatever Arduino you have. So uh, the difference of this project from other projects mostly is that the timer is adjustable so you could change the time. So let's just turn it on and then see how it works. Okay, so now the system boots itself and now we should be ready to go. So uh, the initial value uh, of the timer is 60 seconds, but the point of this plus and minus is that this value is adjustable and you can adjust it by just one second or you can press and hold and then it's going to adjust really fast. Uh, and same for minus. So you could start pressing the minus and it will go down to zero where it will stop. Okay, so let's just set it up, say, at five seconds, and then we're gonna start, and after the countdown is over, it's gonna beep. Let's see, it does work. After that, you can reset, and you can, for example, set it up for 60 seconds. Uh, and let's start. Okay, so, and say, if you decided that you need it for more than 60 seconds, you can press reset, and then set it to say 80 seconds and then start again. So it's fully functional and it does work. Now let's talk about how to make it. For some of you it may be easier to simply follow the diagram on the screen and the table with the connections. Then you can safely scroll to about 10 minute mark where I start discussing the code. Also you may follow the link to the project below in the description section. Just simply upload the code to your Arduino and enjoy the project. Okay, so now in this part of the video, uh, we're gonna actually assemble our project. So I disassembled everything that you've seen in the introductory part of the video. And let's start over essentially from scratch. Okay, so we're gonna start from uh, taking our four uh, digit seven segment display and inserting it into the breadboard. Before I do that, let me just mention that it, it's got uh, 12 pins on the bottom and I'm gonna call the pins uh, in the bottom row, just bottom one, bottom two, up to bottom six, and the pins in the top row, top one, top two, up to top six. So we're gonna insert it into uh, the breadboard right in the middle here, such such that the bottom one and the top one pins of the uh, of the display will go into the 50th socket uh, in the uh, breadboard. So just like that. Okay. So the next step, maybe let's do it a little bit below. So that's going to be right in the middle. Uh, so then we're going to uh, insert the buttons. So I already placed three buttons here and I will just show how to insert one of them, the fourth one. So the button has four pins uh, on the bottom and when you press uh, the button itself uh, it connects these two pins and it connects these two pins, right? So these two are always connected and these two are always connected. So what it does, it just connects these two pins. Okay, so we insert the button uh, in the breadboard such that these pins will go on one side and the other two pins will go on the other side. And it's gonna go just like that. So exact placement, of course, is not that important. Now, the right pins of all these buttons will be connected to the ground of Arduino and I will connect uh, the ground to the ground row of the breadboard. So that's why I made uh, these small jumper wires that will connect the right pins of each of the buttons to the ground row. Okay, so that's it. So, uh, well, let's start connecting the buttons, for example. Maybe let's just start connecting the, uh, the ground wire. So we connect the ground pin of Arduino to one of the empty sockets in the ground row of the breadboard. So at the next stage we connect uh, we connect the buttons themselves. Okay, so let's start. So the uh, the left pin of the start button will be connected to uh, pin 13 of the breadboard, right here. The left pin of the reset button will be connected to the 12th pin. 
uh, to the 12th pin of Arduino. Uh, the left pin of the minus button will be connected to the 16th pin of Arduino. Connected to 16th. And finally, the left pin of the plus button will be connected to pin 17 of Arduino. Like that. So we connected the ground and we connected all the buttons. The next step, we connect, in the next step, we're gonna, we're gonna connect the buzzer. So the one that will produce the sound. Okay, so the buzzer has two pins. The longer one is the plus and the shorter one is the minus. So we can connect it like that and then we're gonna have to do two wires, but I will just do a very short trick. I will connect the minus pin of the buzzer right into the ground row of the breadboard, just like that. And then the plus goes to one of the columns in the breadboards, in the breadboard, okay? And then I have to connect the plus of the buzzer to pin 15 of the Arduino, pin 15. Okay, so now we have connected the buttons and the buzzer. So the last thing that we have to do is to connect the uh, display itself. Let's first connect the top row from 50 to 55, and then we'll connect the bottom row. Okay, so the top row, uh, so the top one, which is, don't forget that this is at column 50 of the breadboard, uh, is connected to pin 6. Top 2, which is in the column 51 of the breadboard, will be connected to uh, pin 2. Top 3 of the display will be connected to uh, pin 7. Top 4 of the display is connected to pin 9 and top 5 will be connected to pin 10. Okay, and finally now top 6 will be connected to pin 3. Okay, so now uh, in the introductory part of the video, uh, in order for uh, better access to, this, to the display, I used jumper wires that moved the pins of the display to the middle part of the breadboard uh, so that it's just easier to see the display and of course you can do that but in this video I will just connect pins direct. Okay, bottom one which is from uh, column 50 of the breadboard is connected to A0 to the pin A0. Bottom two which is in column 51, is connected to pin 5, pin 5 of Arduino. Bottom 3, bottom 3 is not connected to anything, so we move to bottom 4, we skip 1. So bottom 3 uh, corresponds to the periods in the display, which we will not use in our project. So bottom uh, 4 uh, is connected to pin 4, of Arduino. So where is our pin 4? Right here. Okay. And finally, bottom 5, not finally, just bottom 5, uh, is connected to pin 8 of Arduino. And finally, now really finally, bottom 6 in the column 55. Uh, is connected to pin 11 of Arduino. So that's a little bit tight, so you probably would be willing to choose a little bit longer wire than I do. But it's fine, I think we're gonna make it, even though it's a little bit non-trivial. Okay, there we go. So now the process is over. So the buttons are connected, and the display is connected, and the buzzer is connected, so we should be all good. Now, uh, as we have assembled our project, we are ready to move to the second phase of this video, 
which is the description of the code. From my perspective, that's the most interesting part. And I will spend some time going over each of the procedures uh, and explaining what they do. So before we start, let me say a few words about the four-digit seven-segment display and how it works, because it's important to understand the program. So this is a display which is a little bit hard to program because of its limitations, and namely because of the fact that it can show at any given, given moment of time uh, only the same configuration of segments on each of the digits, or, for example, just the same digit at all four positions. Therefore, in order to show different digits at different positions, you have to be a little bit creative. The way it's done is the following. So first you turn on the first digit at the first position, and you do that for a very short time. Then you turn it off, and then you turn on the second digit at the second position. Again, you display it for a very short time, turn it off, and then turn on the third digit at the third position for a very short time, turn it off, turn on the fourth digit at the fourth position, show it for a very short time, turn it off. And then you repeat the whole process all over from digit one to digit two, three, and four. And you do that at such a pace that your eyes actually don't notice that your digits are blinking. Our display is controlled by several pins, namely the digit pins. So here uh, we have these digit pins uh, in an array, which is called digit pin. And these are the Arduino pins that are connected to the corresponding pins uh, of the display. And they determine which digits will light up. So, for example, if you switch on digit six, uh, digit pin six, uh, you will light up the first digit, and so on. And the second part of the control consists of the segment pins. So there are seven, well, in fact, eight, but we're not using the eighth one. There are seven uh, segment pins that we're using, and they control which segments will light up in each of the digits that are turned on by the digit pins. So you can find the map of these uh, uh, segments online in many places, so I'll probably not go through that here. Okay, so uh, initially, in the beginning part of the program, we just define these digital pins, the pins for the digits, the pins for the segments, and we define what does it mean that the uh, pin is on and the pin is off. So we define a few more things. So first of all, we define the speaker pin. Uh, that's pin 15, so that's the pin that we connect our speaker to. And we define four pins for the buttons. So these are the pins to which the left contacts of the buttons uh, are connected. We also define the initial countdown time, which will be 60 seconds. And we define a structure type, which is called struct digits, that will just contain an array of four digits that will correspond to the digits that will be displayed on our display. Okay, so that's uh, the end of the definition part, and we can just move to uh, the setup part. The setup is really easy, we just set up all the pins, turn them on, we set up the segment pins, we set up the uh, digit pins, and we set up the speaker pin, and uh, finally the button pins. So now we are kind of ready to go. Now the whole thing will uh, consist of several functions with the main loop at the very, very end. The first function, just play tone, it just uh, defines how the buzzer will sound at the end of the countdown. So nothing fancy here. The next function is called light number. So uh, that's uh, essentially the only function that I uh, found online. It's just a, it's pretty straightforward. It just defines configurations of segments that correspond to digits. Right, so for example, if you want to display digit zero, you have to turn on segments A, B, C, D, E, F, but you turn off segment G. Okay, so we just list all the cases, and let me just point out that at the very end we have case 10, where all of these segments are off. So if we want to light up number 10, that just means that we turn off all the segments. So the next uh, function is switch digit. Uh, so this function uh, turns on only digit that has number digit and turns off all other digits. It is also quite straightforward. So the next function uh, converts the given number n, which is from 0 to uh, 9999, uh, into the array containing the digits of that number. And so the array will be 
exactly of this type struct digits. So it's not quite array, it's a structure that contains this array. And uh, we're going to use uh, this structure uh, to light up the corresponding digits later. So let me just mention that if the number starts with several zeros, those positions will be returned as tens so that we don't light them up later. The next function is kind of the uh, most important function here, probably, and it could be very useful in other projects as well. It just tells uh, that you want to light up number n for time time. So if you want to light, for example, th 327, you just uh, type in print 327, comma 1000, and it will light up for 1000 milliseconds. Uh, roughly 1000 milliseconds. Time here is given in uh, roughly milliseconds. I'll go back to that just a little bit later. Okay, so that's the that's the function that allows us to print the number. I was actually quite surprised that I did not find any library that does that, so I had to do that by myself. Maybe there is a library, I just didn't spend enough time to find that. The next function is countdown. So this function initiates the countdown from n. So the second argument controls the speed uh, of the countdown, and again, it's roughly in milliseconds, and so this represents the delay before the next number is shown. Okay, so you could see that there are some conditional statements uh, in the middle, and this will allow us to break out of the loop once we press the reset button. And at the end, we're going to play tone for one second. The next function, and that's the last function before the loop, is the reset function. So this function sets up the countdown timer initially and after you press uh, the reset button. And it also controls the plus and minus buttons. Okay, So you can play around and see there are some conditions here uh, that you cannot set up the countdown less than zero or more than, more than 9,999 and so on. Finally, we are at the main loop function that will repeat itself un until the Arduino is on. It starts with just uh, calling the reset function, and then uh, it waits until the countdown function returns true, and it does return true after it completes its full countdown to zero. So here uh, I'll mention this 962 number. This number represents the delay, which is chosen exactly in a way that the timer goes down to zero in seconds. So if you modify this number uh, to a different number, you're going to get a faster speed, a slower speed. This is up to you to choose the speed. And finally, after this while loop is done, the uh, last line of the code just waits until we press the reset button again, and then the process starts over. So that basically describes the whole code. You can play around with that. And so once uh, you are done, you just press this button to upload that to Arduino. So I've done that already. And now we can move to the last stage where we demonstrate again how it works. Now, as we prepared our program uh, and we're ready to upload it to Arduino. So uh, let's just uh, connect our Arduino. Okay, and uh, let's upload the program, so which is just done a second ago. Uh, and finally, we are ready to go. We can start our timer, and you can see that it goes down. We can reset it. We can modify by pressing plus and minus buttons. And let's check if the buzzer works. So let's take, let's press start. does work. So I hope you enjoyed the project.